the space station can maneuver out of the way of any bigger pieces of junk. But as astronaut Sandra Magnus knows, it's not like turning the wheel of a car. You have to program the kind of burn you want to do. You have to program the maneuver that the station needs to get to do the kind of burn you want to do based on which jets you're using. It takes several days. They may have gotten it down faster than that, but it's not just, OK, flip a switch, let's move the station. It's not that straightforward. In 2014, the station had to move three times to avoid large chunks of space debris. But as Sandra Magnus discovered in March 2009, sometimes there's not enough time to move the station. It was mid-morning and I was getting ready to exercise and, and we were just sort of getting into our mid-morning routine, if you will. And we got a call that we were having a red conjunction and we're looking around, what the heck is a red conjunction? You know, because we hadn't really trained for it. A red conjunction is a warning code that the space station could be hit by some space junk. This warning is only issued when there's no time to move the station. It wasn't predicted. It was a little bit chaotic because this was the first time we had had one of these. Copy, Al, you're on your way to the Ground control were tracking a 13 centimeter chunk of a Delta II rocket body about the size of a CD, apparently heading straight for the station. And Sandra was sent to the Soyuz capsule, the space station's life raft in preparation for a possible evacuation. When the Soyuz docks to station, it's put in sort of, I'll call it a sleep mode, because you really don't need it while you're on station because it's your you know, delivery vehicle and, and your go-home vehicle. But when you're getting ready to evacuate from the station, whether it's nominal or a contingency, you have to power all that stuff up. And there's a certain sequence of things that you have to go through to do that. But she wasn't panicking. It's either going to hit or it's not going to hit. And so worrying about it doesn't help you. All you have to do is just prepare everything that you need to prepare so that if it hits, then you're in the best possible configuration. And if it doesn't hit, well, then you just go on and do it anyway. The Soyuz has a small window. And as she sat and waited, she couldn't stop herself looking out. So I'm looking out the portal thinking, oh, maybe I can see it. You know? You know, your, your view is like this, right? It's like looking out of a peephole of a door. And I was laughing at myself, going, there's no way, because if I saw it, it would be really bad, because <laughs> it'd be right there. Fortunately, the junk sailed by, and the station was undamaged. But the crisis did force the astronauts and NASA to reevaluate what they would do if it happened again. We got through it, it was all good. So it wasn't that everybody didn't know what needed to be done, but it's like, what order do you communicate? What's the most important thing you communicate? Who communicates what to who? So there was a lot of refinement that needed to happen. And so we instituted that after this, 